All right, so this this appears not to have seized. All right. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's definitely melted. I'm gonna now use this to create uh, that the the uh, peanut butter cup structure. And to do that, I'm just gonna grab uh, this tin, and then this this is gonna th 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 ideally that's gonna give you your Reese's peanut butter. Those, the, the grid so they're gonna the be really, really big Reese's cuts. I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> they're not gonna be the minis. Hi everyone, welcome back to Chemist in the Kitchen. Today we're gonna be exploring chocolate and uh, the three of us are all gonna be making different items with chocolate. I picked out a favorite childhood treat and still the, the food that I steal out of my kids' Halloween candy, which is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. So I will be working on trying to recreate a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup in the kitchen. So after we're done today making our chocolates, we're gonna box them up and ship them out to each other. And then we're gonna get to enjoy them again with each other and, and see what they taste like. Uh, my name is Matt Hardings. I am an associate professor of chemistry at American University, and I am a materials scientist. Hi, uh, I'm Natasha. I am uh, finishing up my PhD in organic chemistry at the University of Arizona. My name is Kevin Aptowitz. Uh, I study soft matter physics, and I'm a professor at Westchester University and a visiting scholar at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm doing a more traditional take on chocolate. I am making chocolate from raw cacao beans. This is just going to be ground chocolate with uh, raw cane sugar and cinnamon. And I will be making holographic chocolate. We're going to pour some chocolate on a plastic grating and it's gonna take some of the grating with it, the, the shape from the grating, and it'll be holographic when we're all done. You two ready to make some chocolate? Yeah. I'm in, let's do it. <laughs> Sorry, that was very corny. <laughs> <laughs> so today to make the uh, Reese's peanut butter cup, I'm going to be making the filling using some creamy peanut butter, some powdered sugar, and to firm it up a little bit, I'll also be mixing in some ground up graham crackers, uh, and I'll be adding some butter as well. And then to make the chocolate coating, I'm going to be melting down some semi-sweet chocolate chips, and then trying to add some butter and mixing that in as well. For my recipe, like I said, I'm making just like the Mexican Alita chocolate tablets. Um, but what you need is just raw cacao beans, just like still in bean form. Um, you need some, it's called piloncillo, but it's like just raw brown cane sugar and then whole cinnamon sticks. And so what I'll do is I'll grind up the roasted cacao beans. I will add some sugar and then add some cinnamon to taste and we'll see how it comes out. My ingredients are really simple. I'm just going to melt some chocolate, but I'm gonna do some fancy melting of chocolate. And then when I'm done, I'm going to let my chocolate cool on top of a grating. But as the chocolate cools, it's going to settle on that grating. And when I peel it off, it will take the structure of the grating with it. This grating that I'm using has a bunch of lines on it periodic lines that make it shimmer the way it does, give it its rainbowy color. And I'm also going to, to, in one batch of mine, I'll add some Pop Rocks as well for some extra color. The higher cocoa percentage you get in it, the shinier they get. And also, really good snaps too. Well, I'm just gonna start melting mine. I've got a hot water bath going here. Um, 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Control the way it goes from melted back to cooled again. So a couple different temperature steps. And then I'm gonna just start working on the filling. I'm gonna start with the filling and then I'll work on the cup later. So think of a chocolate <laughs> bath like this chair, right? As a 2D part of this chair, right? So you've got this part here and then both the seat and both legs. This is a chocolate fat molecule. So it's a triglyceride. And so we've got the sort of the three parts of the, the triglyceride and so they can stack onto each other in different ways. You can get chocolate lining, the fats lining up like this, or you can get them lining up like that. The difference between these two is the difference between whether you get shiny tempered chocolate or bloomed chocolate. Uh, but you really, to get the tempered chocolate, you want the two backs of the chair aligning with each other. So what are you doing? You're, this is just like, you're just doing the grinding? Yeah, so the first thing you do is you grind up all the cacao and then you grind up the sugar with it and then you add the cinnamon, so it's like kind of stepwise. So I'm doing the cacao right now. 
So there's my uh, uh, my peanut butter filling. Oh, delightful. So my chocolate is all melted. So I'm gonna drop the temperature from 115 down to 81. All right, so this this appears not to have seized. I don't know if all you right. guys are able to see. Oh, but that's it's, awesome. Uh, yeah, it's definitely melted. <laughs> That's and awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna now use this to create uh, that the the uh, peanut butter cup structure. And to do that, I'm just gonna grab uh, this tin. So I'm actually using a uh, paintbrush. So oh, nice. <laughs> a new a new yeah paintbrush just to paint the because I, I want this chocolate to be pretty thin. And now I'm going to squish it up a little bit, right? Because what you want to do is you want to start, again, aligning your chairs. And so making tiny little seed crystals. So right now I'm going to make a lot of different crystals by mixing them all up. Uh, but then when I bring it from 80 degrees to 90 degrees, only my preferred chair alignment is going to, to still be there. So here's my grating. So you can probably see it shining a little bit better now, maybe. You can see it kind of like starting to yeah. stick together a bit. Okay, I'm about to add my sugar. Kind of just eyeballing how much I think I should add. I'm starting with about like this much. So this is like a whole one and this is the one that I used. So I'm gonna cut a little edge off so that I can pipe this out. Now I'm getting my pop rock dust. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of this on some of them. Uh, we'll see how this goes. This may be disaster. <laughs> All right, so I finally finished painting all my my Reese's cups. So I have my liner here. All right, I'm gonna start filling my, uh, putting in my peanut butter mix. So I think with adding the sugar to this, I think it's like getting a little too sticky to like go through the coffee grinder. So I'm gonna try and like loosen up the grind a bit. I've finished my, uh, my fillings there. I added some peanut butter. And next up, I'm gonna melt some more chocolate and then just seal these these up. They look decent, I think. We'll see. So mine's definitely coming together. There was like a, like a solid forming at the bottom of like the food processor, like the stuff under the blades. Um, oh yeah. It's looking good. Yeah. yeah, it does. So my, my mixture is starting to stick to the walls of the food processor. So I think I'm getting somewhere. I think I'm gonna start trying to make a puck pretty soon. I've. Uh... Filled up my Reese's peanut butter cups, coated wow. them in chocolate. Nice. And now I'm just gonna just os like rock them a little bit to try to get the top to be as flat as possible. Just I'm just gonna making some pucks and they wouldn't stick together, so I'm gonna oh grind no. some more. Yeah, so I'm gonna grind okay. some more. But they were pretty sticky, so I think I'm like almost there. You're getting there. On like the sides, it's like yeah, oh yeah, it's on the clumpy. bottom. Yeah. So like I took out like, a bunch of the powder that I had and put it into a separate bowl. Um, and then I just kept grinding until I kind of stopped seeing stuff flying around. And you can oh, see it start to kind of like form that. the paste. Yeah. But look at that, you got a puck. I got a puck. It's okay, it's not cute, but it no. is a puck nonetheless. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna make a couple little ones and then I'm gonna like put more in and like grind it and kind of see if I can like optimize this. So this is what they currently look like Ooh. coming out of the... I finished, I pulled them all out, and I have a whole plate full. These should be good. Yeah, so there's your oh. your peanut butter filling with your your thin layer of chocolate. Mmm. No, actually, these are awesome. I think the thickness is right. It's a good proportion of peanut butter and chocolate. Um. So they're good. They're they're good. They're definitely edible, which is good. Um, <laughs> but I think I don't. I wouldn't say they taste just like the tablets. But they taste really good. Like it's it's sweet. It's chocolatey. A little bit cinnamony. Like you know, it's got all the good flavors in there. The texture is a little grainy. I wish I could have ground it like a little bit finer. But I would say overall a success. That's awesome. I think we're all set now. Uh, I know my peanut butter cups are ready. Matt's will be uh, done soon, and Natasha looks like her pucks are ready to get shipped. So let's get these shipped out and see how they taste. I lost my temper again. Again. The other day was pretty bad. Today's is okay. It's better. It's a little bit better. They're not very snappy and they melt a little too soon. So I'm getting close, but not quite there yet. It's been a couple of days and during that time, we got packages in the mail. 
Womp, 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 womp. <laughs> I, got I got I got two packages. Everyone else got one package. Because somebody was a failure last week. And when did you realize, uh, when did it dawn on you that you were a failure? When my chocolate wasn't setting that whole time we were just sitting there waiting. It should take like five minutes. At that point, I was kind of sure when I woke up on the, the following day and the, the little heart chocolates I did made look like this. I knew for sure that, <laughs> that things had gone awry. <laughs> the crystals had formed in the proper way in the dark parts, and the light parts is where the, the chocolate has bloomed, where you get those crystal forms that you don't want to get. Even in the middle, there are, there are portions of each. What part, what part of the procedure it was that caused this to so, happen? So, yeah, I went back and I, um, tried again on on Saturday. It didn't work again on Saturday, but but what I made on Saturday, um, here are these, and, and they are a little, right? Oh, they are a little yeah. shinier. Yeah, but that there is great. some bloom to it too. You can see sort of a little bit of discoloration towards the bottom. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have that at all. I also feel like this is representative of what science actually looks like, where you mm -hmm. come up with an idea for what the experiment should be, you then conduct the experiment, figure out all the ways it has failed and then begin working on those aspects of it. Yeah, work your way through it. <laughs> should we start with uh, Natasha's creation? Yeah. And should we try the Abuelita first or the homemade version Yeah, first? yeah, try that one first. Like, see what it's supposed to taste like. You okay. Know. <laughs> so, so this is our control. It's good, there's a lot of cinnamon in it and just a little, little bit of kind, like there's a little bit of spice in it, not a whole lot. I feel like I can really taste the, also in, in the Abuelita version, the sugar. It's like very mm -hmm. kind of grainy. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. I'm all nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. There's less chocolate in yours than, definitely than in the Abuelita, but there's more interesting stuff too. I was worried about making it too bitter, I think. I think I was scared that mm -hmm. it was gonna turn out too bitter, so I think I might have yeah. overloaded the sugar a bit, but. Yeah. It's really, I, I think it's great, I, you know, it's, um. Mm. It's holding together. It definitely isn't as dense, but it's still holding together quite nicely, particularly given how nice. much you were struggling to keep it yeah. Yeah. together. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Awesome. All right, should we move on to our our final Reese's one, cup? the Reese's yes. Peanut Butter Cup? I'm surprised that they have that much, like there's any sort of variation at all across as you go. Here's the awesome one that Kevin made. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it looks great, doesn't it? Oh, I do like the dark chocolate a lot better. Mm-hmm. Was it good? Mm-hmm. Honestly, even the texture's the same. Mm-hmm. This is great. And the peanut butter is good too. So that was just peanut butter and graham crackers? It was peanut butter, butter, powdered butter. sugar, okay. graham crackers. Yeah, the peanut butter is like a tiny bit softer in the Reese's one. That's the only difference I can really, that and the chocolate, like otherwise they're like twins. Yay. So good. Mm -hmm. I would call this overall successful. I think y'all learned something. Yeah. I think they all turned out great. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, and I definitely think actually Matt's experiment uh, showed us a lot about the, the, the challenges of crystal structure. And I definitely learned the issues of seizing of chocolate if you add a little bit of water to it, how challenging that is. And so it's not always as simple as just melt the chocolate and then cool it down and you're set. There's actually, a, there's a lot of chemistry going on in that chocolate at the molecular level that you're fine tuning, which is fascinating. Well, I'm gonna keep eating all this delicious chocolate here. And, uh, but thanks for, for watching, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next time on Chemists in the Kitchen. Yeah, I can't wait to eat the rest of this Reese's Cup, it's so good.